Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be testing PWM frequency option on the BL Holly 32 ESCs. Now previously I have stated that the higher the PWM frequency the smoother it runs and it's true. That's what it says in the operations manual and that's what I've noticed before and how I noticed it was both in actual flight and in oscilloscope testing. First of all, I had the Matek F405, the older version with the super sensitive gyro and had some air bot wraths at the time. And I noticed when I drop it down to 16 kilohertz, it's default 24 kilohertz of PWM frequency. When I dropped it down to 16 kilohertz, I started getting yaw twitches. When I increased it, there's basically like adding a low ESR capacitor and a dramatic reduction of noise in the feed, which was nice. At the time, I didn't see the video feed, by the way, because it was always perfect. It was 9 volt regulator on that board. So the theory is the higher the PWM frequency, the more clean it runs. And we did kind of prove that before on the one motor testing setup. However, now we have the complete four motor testing setup. And I really wanted to check this out with four motors. Is there really a difference? So here, if we take a look at the operations manual, this is what it says. It says uh, the motor PWM frequency can be programmed between 16 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz, but it's default at 24 somewhere in the middle. Higher PWM frequencies can run motors smoother. They do run smoother, not just can. I've noticed that on a couple setups. They do run smoother. There's always a little catch though. Programmable frequencies also allows for moving of a small but potentially disturbing humps in the throttle response. Now you might say, what the hell is that? Exactly, what the hell is that? So let's just take a look here. So let me just put this down so we can get an idea. So on the left side here, we have just the basic Tico 32 running BL Heli S, uh, third, sorry, BL Heli 32 at 24 kilohertz, which is default on all BL Heli 32 ESCs. On the right side here, we have the same ESC, same setup running 48 kilohertz. Now I ran this test quite a bit times, maybe over 25 times for a couple of hours because I kept noticing this thing here and I didn't know what the hell this was. I was like, okay, well maybe it's first couple of times. I was like, okay, well maybe the signal is coming loose. Maybe I didn't solder something right. Maybe it's the battery. Maybe the motor is loose. Maybe the prop is loose, but no, this is the hump they were talking about. I didn't know that at the time until I came back and read the, uh, the operations manual yet again, because I didn't know what the hell that meant. And this is what we're seeing here. It's not bad. But when you take a look at it, it looks pretty dramatic. Well, I mean, because it's my quad is in the stationary position, it was pretty dramatic when I saw, when I kept seeing this while looking at it. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to the manual real quick. So it says, you know, uh, the program frequency allows you to move a small but potentially disturbing humps in the throttle response. Okay, so all ESCs have these bumps. Okay, so that's nothing to worry about. But with BL Heli 32, they can be moved in the RPM range to a place where the system has low sensitivity to them. Now this can only, I believe, uh, I, you know, I think this can be only uh, tuned while you're flying, obviously. I don't think you can get like a pretty good result while it's stationary. You need to get a feel for it and you need to see how your quad um, responds to, the, to, to it anyways. Now let's just drop this down now. All right, so here's the hump that we were talking about. Before we weren't really seeing it, maybe it was off the scale here somewhere at 10% throttle, but it was so, so much low power that you didn't really do anything. But now since we moved it up uh, almost double, uh, yeah, double, is it double? Yeah, no, not double, I'm tripping. Oh yeah, we doubled it, 100%. No, we didn't, yeah, we did. Oh my God, I'm lost. All right, yeah, we doubled it because it was 24 kilohertz and now it's 48 kilohertz. So we doubled it. So once we doubled it, we see it went. Uh, so this would be, where is this? Okay, so we have 10% throttle, 25, 50%, 75% throttle. So the problem is happening right between, we could say, I think 60% and 75% throttle. That's where it is. Doesn't look that bad. But now let's not look at the hump for just a second and just take a look at the overall voltage going uh, between 24 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz. Can you see the difference? I can. The, the the 48 kilohertz is obviously doing a lot better. It's a lot cleaner, but this is kind of annoying. But overall, it's a lot cleaner. The, the amplitude which the voltage is running at, which is the fluctuation, is a lot smaller, and that's what you want. Uh, look at 75% throttle, look at 75% throttle here. Can you see that? That that's 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 a dramatic difference. I mean, look at these little waves here. And this is just straight hardcore flush. So it's 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 obviously doing good. 
Now, something you need to take note of. Some of you might put it up to 40 kilohertz and your quad won't even boot. Well, it will boot, but it won't spin the motors. That's when you have to start dropping it down. 38 kilohertz, 32 kilohertz. Uh, you know, it depends on your flight controller. I, I didn't dig into what the PWM frequency really does or what flight controllers can handle that. But um, yeah, that's something to take note of. So don't worry if you put it at 48 kilohertz and it's not spinning anymore. Just drop it down in small increments until you get it to work and then you're good to go. Uh, it's like adding a low ESR capacitor to this. All right, so we checked out that throttle hump or whatever you want to call it. Now let's go ahead and check out the noise because the noise, the overall simulated flight aggressive maneuver noise. Let's go ahead and check it out. And if you're curious and you want to see the FPV video feed, uh, trans, you know, the, the FPV video feed representation of the difference between 24 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz, I ha you'll see that at the end of the video. All right. So let's go ahead and get the noise. So we're going to go ahead and stick the noise on the left for just the default 24 kilohertz. There we go. All right, looks good. It's one of the best I've seen. Default setup. It's the best ESC that I've tested till this day. And let's go ahead and bring up the 48 kilohertz. So here's the noise simulated aggressive flight maneuvers. All right. So first of all, it's cleaner but it's not cleaner, but it is cleaner. Okay, well, what do you mean? Well, first of all, if you take a look at the straight lines, you could totally see right there, for example, this is the 48 kilohertz on the side. It's, it's doing, it's, it's a lot cleaner. The amplitude's a lot smaller. Maybe if we take a look at this, it'll be better. So it's, it's doing a lot better, but what really ruins this at the current moment of time is that hump, because that hump is right there. Can you see it? So we can totally know now that this, what happened here, it was somewhere below 50% throttle. And then it went, now it's going between 60 to 75% throttle here. And then it went back down because that's the voltage going back up. And this was the sag, but you could see that hump. And it's, it's pretty dramatic, by the way. I mean, it's, it's hella jerk. I mean, it jerked my whole table. It was just insane because I have the thing bolted on my table. Uh, so it is pretty dramatic now. I don't know how it will translate in the air and I do have some flexible ass arms on the carbon fiber <laughs> For the testing setup. So I don't know how this will translate in the air, but it didn't look very nice I could tell you that right now. I thought it was just gonna yank itself out and you know, it was it was crazy So, uh, I re I'm really curious. I'm gonna be digging into this throughout the day It's just because I have no other thing to do right now But I really wanted just to to release this finding real quick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a larger resolution throttle uh, throttle noise test which just goes by 10% increments instead of 25 and uh, Watch it and then play with the PWM frequency and the timing and stuff and seeing what we can do with that uh, seeing what's really going on. Where is it really going? What it's gonna be pretty interesting I have no idea what I'm gonna find if it's a, if it's super interesting. I'm gonna come back and just uh, share everything um, If not, we'll just gonna just do the PWM frequency on uh, How far it's going up and down and I really want to see if the other settings do affect this hump uh, Because it's pretty dr This is a pretty dramatic hump by the way uh, It's 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 not really good. This will cause you a specific twitch at a specific throttle range uh, or a motor for example if you're gonna roll and maybe the back motor needed just the back mo back left motor needed between 60 and 75 percent throttle and the other ones didn't it would do some weird ass twitch for you and then you'd be like what the hell's going on my motor's bad and it could cause the motor to heat up because this is not uh it's not clean uh so it's, it's kind of like a hiccup like it, it's, it's like a, a motor backfiring like an engine backfiring on you uh that's what's really going on there and um yeah so um that's currently it pwm frequency does make it a lot smoother uh increasing it but you have to you know you maybe you have to luck out where this uh, hump is and if you do notice it just keep playing around with it uh, just don't go below 24 kilohertz uh because it does get worse the esc will get worse depending on your esc uh stick between 24 and 48 most people s reported me or emailed me a while a long time ago and i really kind of noticed it uh, that around 32 to 38 kilohertz was or 34 I think kilohertz was the best for them because sometimes you know the higher uh, The PWM frequency the motor won't spin anymore. It's just something between the flight controller and the, and the ESC um, and yeah, that's it guys, so I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, Please don't forget to like share and subscribe and I have a link to everything down below and I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care